<laughs> Eight hours would be tough. Yeah, uh, I, I think we could do it. Um, all right, I guess we are live, lads. So, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Urban Hazar Image Consulting. And uh, today we got uh, four lovely fellows here to uh, talk about their beer journeys. We're just going to get to know each other and such. We got uh, Tyson from Faith Faithfully Bearded. Uh, we have Mick uh, from Beardy Vlogger. We have Brian from Beards and Banjos. And we have Patrick from Beardtastic Reviews. How are you, fellas? Great. Doing well. Doing well, man. man. Oh, man. Uh, it's so, so great to hear it. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and a big thanks to Mike for putting this all together. He's a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, and, Mick's, uh, Mick's doing a great job on that. I yeah, have, Mick, sorry. <laughs> I, okay. I, on your end, all I'm seeing on the uh, YouTube video itself is, is stuck on Patrick. So there's something you can do to get to switch yeah. back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it, 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 that's what I was asking earlier. I, I didn't know how to uh, switch it back and forth. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, we'll start with, uh, Mick. We'll, uh, uh we'll, 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 why'd you start your channel and, uh, why are you in the beard community? Sure. So yeah, I, I started my channel just about three months ago. Uh, prior to that, I had a blog. I was just running a blog for like 18 months. And then I decided that, um, after actually, uh, after subscribing to BeardTube, I was like, well, you know, this kind of looks fun. I would love to review some of these products, you know, on video. Um, it's a little tough for me because I get like a really bad social anxiety. Like even right now, talking on camera is really tough for me. But, um, you know, it's been fun. And um, so, yeah, just uh, love reviewing the products, giving beer tips. And I uh, would just love to, you know, continue and meet new people like yourselves and, and you know, create some friendships and, um, you know, relationships with the uh with the beard community and the beard oil companies. So it's been a lot of fun and I uh, plan to continue on. So that's me. Awesome. And uh, our boy, Brian. Hey guys, I'm Brian Haywood. Uh, my um, YouTube channel is Beards and Banjos. Uh, I started growing my beard a couple of years ago for um, No Shave November. Um, and then it just kind of blossomed from there. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a high school math teacher. Um, nice. And before uh, starting my YouTube channel for beards, I have one for music. I play the banjo, do singing. So everything I do just kind of turns into how would I, why does it work? And um, how can I present it to someone else? So when I got to in my beard journey, I found the beard brand channel and they've got lots of tips and tricks and that kind of thing. So my brain started processing. And, and then a few months later, I started my, uh, my channel. And I focus mostly, well, kind of half and half. I do a lot of um, product reviews, uh, beard oil, but also tools and that kind of stuff. But the other half is tips and tricks. And I've also started a beard advice series where guys can send in their pictures. I take a look at it for a little while and kind of think about different ways, uh, what might look good on them, helping them with their styling routine, uh, their beard shape, that kind of thing. So I'm up to episode 22 or 23 now. So I'm having fun time with that. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, I, I just watched one of your uh, beard advice videos, and I, uh, I I really really enjoyed it. You have a lot of great insights, and uh, and um, I, everyone watching the stream should, right now should be subscribing to all these wonderful fellas. Uh, Tyson, faithfully bearded, uh, man of the hour. Uh, obviously, he's been doing great things in the community, but uh, let, let, let us know a few things about your channel. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you for having me on here. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. I started. I guess I've I've always uh, kind of had some five o'clock shadow, and then this last year for No Shave November, I decided to let it go. And uh, my wife bought me some beard oil, and then you start researching, you know. And I came across Beard Brand, and then you try some of that, and then I came across uh, Scuba, and started watching videos. And then he did a video on on. Uh, like how to start a YouTube channel for cheap and stuff like that. And so I got a lot of uh, tips from that video and I sat down and I made a video once and I was like, well, oh, this is pretty fun. I think I can do this. And I kind of have a background in marketing. Uh, so I really like the marketing side of it. I, I really pride the channel on spending a full week with a company kind of unboxing to give the customer experience of what the customers are going to get from the company. 
and then kind of just spend the whole week with the product and then do a review on Friday. And so the company kind of gets a full week of promotion on Instagram and YouTube. Um, and then obviously, uh, by the name Faithfully Bearded, uh, we do all of it in uh, with faith in God. And uh, my wife gets involved uh, with quite a bit of it as well. She likes to to be involved and talk to the people of the beard community. So really our goal is to market the companies, but to grow the bearded community. And I think we have a really great community, but communities are only so big and they need growth. And so how can we benefit our YouTube channels and what we each bring our talents to the table and how can we utilize those and help grow the community and bring new people into the community. So that's kind of what I'm about and I've uh, been doing it for a while and just willing to learn and help other people grow. You know, this, there's a saying that's when you start getting somewhere to reach back and bring somebody else with you. And so as I grow and get more subscribers and, and more interest of people wanting to watch my videos, I try to share any knowledge and excitement or things that I find uh, with other people uh, that are doing YouTube channels, and I really thrive on that type of thing as well. So anybody that uh, wants to do a YouTube channel or beard stuff, like, don't be afraid to reach out. I love helping people, and I know Brian's the same way. And B Brian's the one that I know probably the most on here, but um, he, I know he's the same way as well. So um, it's just a tight-knit community where we all just like to chat and, and bring new people in and get and have that friendship, you know? Yep. Yeah, you and Brian do stream, streams pretty regularly, huh? Uh, we've just done a couple of them together. Like last night was like our first one, I think. Oh, really? You know, okay. We jumped in a couple with each other before, but last night was our first one that we planned to do together. Yeah, and oh. Tyson does a live stream every Friday night. Um, I've kind of done live streams here and there, just kind of getting into it a little bit. But Tyson's great with the, the family aspect, getting the wives in there, getting the kids involved. Uh, and he's also very helpful for other people doing YouTube. Uh, trying to grow their channel. Uh, and um, I like helping brand new companies. So if there's a company that's never had any exposure before, I like testing the products and giving them feedback and kind of uh, helping getting the word out in the community. Yeah. You've been um, trying a lot of products on Etsy too, right? I, 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 I try, whoever wants to send me products, any company, most of them, I'm at the point now where most of the time the new companies will contact me just because I'm so active in the uh, in there, Patrick and Tyson can probably talk about that as well. So it's yeah. kind of a mixture. Sometimes um, I get referred by other people, and then it ju it's just kind of a random thing sometimes. But it tends yeah. to be recently a lot of new companies because the bigger companies don't really need exposure from my little channel. <laughs> <laughs> what else so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good subway into Patrick, the uh, calm reviewer, as they call him, here on the YouTubes. Uh, good to have you here, Patrick, and good to have all you. Um, what, what, what's your shtick, Patrick? What, what, what do people have to know about you? Well, I, uh, I tell you, too, I can't even remember how long ago I started. Uh, and I'm like, uh, what's his face? I get anxiety real bad, and it took me forever to start making videos, but... I kind of started growing scruff forever. And then I just said, you know, uh, it all, it all based upon, you know, my mom got cancer and her hair was falling out and, you know, I figured, you know, I'm just gonna let it grow out. And I constantly watch YouTube videos and stuff and like, I'm going to go ahead and try that. So here we are today about, uh, almost a year into it. So that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And a uh, very touching story as well. Um, Patrick's got that green screen. So he always yeah. <laughs> I, think yeah. should re I think we should rename this thing the, uh, the, the introvert live stream because I'm a big introvert myself. Hey! Yeah. Is, I'm yeah. about the other two it, on here. Yeah, introverts united. Absolutely. We, we can call the live stream anxiety bros instead of <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love that crippling anxiety, bros. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't know about Tyson though. He seems to be a little extroverted. No, I am very introverted, actually. Oh, uh, really? Okay. It, it just it just doesn't come out on camera for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm extremely introverted. Um, it's just I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm, when I have a camera in front of me, I can talk. Yeah. Well, I guess we have nothing to worry about. We're just a bunch of anxious fellas. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so me personally, um, Kaz Vasalka from Urban Hazar Image Consulting. Uh, well, growing a beard for me was very valuable. Um, and, I, well, you guys probably know I use minoxidil to grow my beard. Uh, I couldn't grow a beard. And it, it was a valuable experience because... Um, I started to realize that if you don't care for your beard and you don't add order to the chaos that's manifesting itself as you grow out your beard, then simply you're going to be, you're going to have a lot of hard times. The, the beard doesn't like you. Your beard will not co cooperate with you. And what tends to happen is you, you go, okay, I'm going to learn to style my beard. And once you learn how to style your beard, how to care for your beard, you go, okay, Oh, this is cool. I'm going to get my hair in order and I'm going to get, you know, my clothes in order. And before you know it, you're a whole different man. And that was the experience. And this is a anecdote I see everywhere, right? I, it's a very, very common anecdote that people grow at their beard. They learn how to style their beard and they really uh, blossom as an individual in terms of their style. So this is something that I've really been interested in uh, as the years have been through and that's what I'm kind of teaching people how to achieve in their own uh, lives and beer, beer journeys. And that's uh, why I call it the Urban Hazard style transformation. So that's kind of my journey here. I, I, I do some uh, reviews and stuff of that nature every once in a while, uh, but it's not really a huge focus of my channel. Uh, I, I, um, I, I think they're very valuable, but it's just, uh, it, it, you know, and I'll, I'll throw them in every now and again, but it's not really my my shtick. I'm, I'm more about beard styling and things of that nature, uh, more so than the you know the the oils and the bombs and things of that nature. Yeah, I think a lot of people find the uh, the minoxidil thing just kind of very uh, it's a very touchy subject with some people. So I'm sure absolutely gotten, I'm sure you've gotten some interesting comments and, and that kind of thing <laughs> on your videos. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I've I've gotten everything, and uh, well, it, it's becoming a little more and more mainstream and more acceptable. And but I, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, you know, it's it's 100 safe for every for everybody. If you watch my videos, you you see I'm very logical and. Uh, forward about the fact that it's not for everyone and that things could go horribly wrong if you do it improperly, right? So, uh, and, you know, I, I have a lot of informative videos on the subject. So, I, I, how, I, I, how long did it take you to grow it uh, with minoxidil? I know I saw your videos, you have quite a few videos about it, yeah. um, but I just haven't had a chance to actually go through and watch them yet. So, how long was your journey with that? Yeah, so it was, so it was about 1.5 years, uh, one and a half years, and then um, I lost some cheat gains, but then I uh, I went on again for for a little bit, and uh, it improved a little bit. But um, in the end, I'm happy with my beard. I, I, I like the way it looks, and you know it was a very valuable valuable experience to me. So, you know. Kaz, it also sounds like you're gonna have to take me shopping here. My girlfriend just commented that. Uh, She's waiting for me to upgrade my style, so maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll take a trip down to uh, Absol absolutely. Area. <laughs> we yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, and that is like one of the biggest futures of my channel, in my opinion. It's going to be, you know, uh, well, image consulting. It's it's kind of a style consulting business. As of right now, like I don't really have any services that are uh, entrenched and things of that nature. But eventually, you know. I will be teaching men how to properly trim style their beards and then how to, you know, uh, coordinate it with strong, bold, uh, intentional outfits and things of that nature. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that. But as of right now, it's mostly beard stuff. And I'll throw in, a, hey, this is a nice outfit that looks good on bearded men because, you know, there's certain styles that look good on bearded men, right? Yeah, I've noticed that when, when guys grow out their beard for the first time, it usually takes them about a year and a half to kind of find the right style for them. Uh, and then after that, they kind of come, come into a new routine, <coughs> they kind of change their style. Like I never wear hats, but when I grew out my beard, I started trying hats. And yep. it, it really freaked me out because I'd look in the mirror and think, this is not me. You know, it's like I'm... I'm, I'm, you know, do people think I'm trying to be somebody else kind of thing? So it, it's kind of interesting for the whole style. You're, you're changing your whole style because of growing out a beard because your face changes. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. look just changes. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, ever since I, you know, I, th things that I was never able to wear, you know, like overcoats and scarves and cr crazy things, you know, like, um, uh, and cardigans and things, things of that nature. Like I, I would never have had the confidence to wear as a cleanly shaven boy, but you, once you get the beard in order and you, you learn how to style it, it, it's just like this whole synchronistic, you know, transformation where you kind of learn how to break out of style. Uh, and you know, you, you find your own little um, uh, style from that. So uh, I, that's what uh, growing a beard has done for me personally. I agree with all that. I think uh, everything changes. So for me, I used to wear uh, like button up shirt, dress shirts, collar shirts all the time. Well, now that I have my beard growing out more, I actually wear them less and I'm more comfortable in like unbuttoning a little bit more or t-shirts or um, just different style, a little bit different style of clothing because A, it might get stuck in my beard or you know, now I have more confidence, like I'm in the process of growing out my hair and I have more confidence to actually do that uh, because of the beard situation. So it just changes your whole look and it changes either your confidence or your style or or whatever you want. Now, it does maybe take a little bit longer in the morning, but <laughs> at the same time, you know, you, you you know, I think it's helped me probably eat a little bit slower because I don't like eating my mustache. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit more careful on how I eat. Maybe I eat a little bit slower. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, doing this a lot, you know, but um, I think as a man <clears throat> and when you get into caring about your beard, I think it just helps you care about your body in general a lot more often because I never really thought about shampoo that I was putting in my hair. Or anything like that until I started caring about how my beard was growing and taking care of that. Now I start thinking about soaps and other things like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and caring more about that type of stuff because I care. I want my beard to be healthy. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have cared if I washed my hair once a week, probably before I started growing a beard. And now it's kind of just like, well, I want my beard to be soft and feel good and be healthy and not have split ends and you know, guys, it can help you relate to your wives a little bit, too, because when they're talking about split ends, you know what they're talking about because you might have one on your beard. You never know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just, it brings to light so many different things. Bathroom now. I've got more products in the bathroom now than she does, so that's a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agreed with that, too. I got more combs and brushes than my wife does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. Tyson, I was curious, have you changed your, your hair and anything else but when, as you grew out your beard besides the, uh, the, the style and the shirts and stuff you're talking about? Yeah, my hair, I used to keep it really short, actually, and now my hair, I haven't cut my hair since I started growing my beard either. Yeah. So now my hair, hair is actually long enough <laughs> to go back in a bun, so I'm, I'm kind of more going for that, I guess, the Viking look. I don't know what I'm doing, but I have to let my hair grow, too. Yeah, that's the exact good. same style I got. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There's the locks. <laughs> I'm just yeah. bald, so that's why I you know I wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty crazy too. Yeah, that ship has sailed for me too, and I do now that I'm taking care of stuff better and more aware of style and that kind of thing. I, I do kind of have regrets that I didn't try different hairstyles when I actually had more hair. Mm. Uh, I ended up with the same, I had the little schoolboy side part I just had for, you know, ever since I was 13 years old. Yeah. So my hair fell out and I had to buzz it. But Yeah. <laughs> but you think about different things too, like your, your glasses, like the shape of your glasses, it changes the whole look of your face. So when you go to the eye doctor and you're picking out new glasses or anything like that, um, I actually switched to like rounder ones like this as to where I used to be more square ones, but like your beard just changes the whole complexity of your face and your style in everything. It's crazy. Yeah, it, cha it changes your jawline unless you, you know, when you get really long like Patrick's, once it starts kind of have, has a mind of its own, it kind of becomes a separate thing from your face. But if it's kind of you're redefining your jawline, you're de definitely changing the shape of your face. It's kind of interesting you, you want you can change your hair you can try different outfits and hats you can change your glasses all that kind of cool stuff yeah it's, i find that's definitely a, a really good thing about growing a beard is if you don't have a very thick jawline or you know a very what's it called i can't think but like a, like a square jaw or whatever yep. you know 
uh, just like a smaller jawline. Growing out the beard really helps kind of give that effect, like you have a nice uh, jawline. There's there's actually a, a fellow that I follow on Instagram, and he's got a very, very weak chin, but then he's grown out a, a, a nice big beard, and it's like night and day, like just looks so much better on him. It, it gives you more control over your style. I think that's probably one of the most powerful uh, things with beards. Um, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, 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 it's just crazy to me how, you know, just uh, just uh, if, discovering new different shapes for your beard and uh, how it can really just change your entire look entirely and how, how a trim can make you an entirely different man overnight. It's, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. Yeah, and it, I mean, it can cover up things too, right? So, like, the main reason that I even started having, like, 5 o'clock shadow scruff is I have three scars on my chin uh, from stitches and stuff from when I was younger. And so, like, that's a self-conscious thing, right, is I got these scars on my chin. I don't really like it. So mm -hmm. I kind of always grew 5 o'clock shadow to cover it up. And then, you know, now I don't – it's just – those things that I don't even think about that stuff anymore that I have those scars there because I don't see them. They're getting covered up by the, the facial fur, you know? So I think, you know, if you're covering up a bad jawline or anything, like, I think first of all, you should just own who you are as a person, but then realize that the facial hair is like a gift uh, to grow. And it's just like a hairstyle, you know, you can have whatever hairstyle, you want but there's a particular one that looks good with your body figure and your type and your type of hair um you know not everybody can pull off the same look of hair but uh you know everybody can pull off a beard and you know we're all just gonna have different styles and like brian said it just takes a year or so a little bit longer maybe to figure out what style of beard you're gonna have and what the length is you know patrick said that he's been growing his for about a year and look how long it is and you know, I might get to a year and still just be like right here, but mm -hmm. you all have different lengths and, and thicknesses that look good uh, for you and what you're going for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think one of my favorite, co my favorite comments uh, in the chat recently is there should be a twist and they should all shave their beards from Blanco. <laughs> I don't think that's happening right now. <laughs> yeah, why are all just shave their beards right now? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the only way that would happen is if I start getting the razor companies sending me a bunch of razors to review. Well, yeah, I just, oh, yeah. I just got a straight razor for the first time, so I've got to try that one out. I got to make sure I don't have any mishaps with that. But it does become interesting once you have a beard for so long, especially a long one. If you don't change that, it kind of becomes part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And then you have to think, do you want to be defined as the guy with the beard? you know do you change it up i, I usually kind of go back and forth from this slightly longer length to to, to shorter um i keep thinking am i ever going to shave again probably i mean i my wife's used to not seeing me with a beard right i had that for 40 years before i really grew the beard um so it's kind of interesting patrick what do you think about that are you is are you bearded for life uh as long as my uh, job lets me for sure keep it trimmed up I, right now i'm real thin at the bottom so i might have to uh trim all that off of there but yeah i think i'm think i'm a lifer nice do you tie yours ever tie yours up no not yet my uh, wife thinks i should kind of a different look but yeah that'd be cool braid it yeah i could actually do that too it's long enough <laughs> yeah i thought about braiding my white stripe down the middle here and put a little bead at the end that would cool Oh yeah, nice. uh, 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 Brian. Might, might I say, uh, everywhere I've posted Brian's photos, uh, you know, to advertise this stream, everyone goes, "Man, that that, that Brian, that white stripe is just badass." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, I think it, I think it looks so cool. I think um, I've had a, I've had about a dozen people ask me how I dye that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a patch yeah. about it's a patch about the size of a quarter right on the tip of my chin. And I can, you know, get rid of it if I really wanted to. I thought about doing a, a series this summer while I'm out and, and trying the, the new beard dye that they came out, the gradual dye from, uh, I don't remember what it was. I thought about trying it, but uh, no, I don't, I don't dye this. It's, it took me 43 years to get this sexy is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> there you I go. Think, 
I don't think you can die, you know, like diet at this point, Brian, I think no. it's becoming who you are. And like, yeah. you know, we were talking about logos and things like that. And I think it's like, that's part of your identity is that stripe, you know, and you, Between you see that people and my that, mustache. I think yeah. And your mustache. Find. Yeah. So I think it's just part of it. I'd rather have a stripe than the speckles that I have. Like I have just gray speckles in here. Mm. So got, I'd rather have quit wearing those dark shirts, Tyson. I know. Everything blends together. I know. My beard is you you don't you don't really know that my beard's down to my waist. You can't tell right now because my it's just all lines. <laughs> Man, yeah. I'd love to hear a little more about your story because you had a longer big a longer beard, right? And now it, it, you're regrowing it back out. What's the story behind that? Sorry, was that a question for me? Yeah. Yeah, I grew uh, I grew my beard for like 44 weeks when I started the blog initially, and I was going to do the full year, um, but then I decided to start making YouTube videos, so I figured a good way to start would be to just do a, like a full shave, and then just kind of walk people through like, you know, go through all the, like the itchy phase, the awkward phase, and everything like that with my viewers, so I can really speak to, you know, what it's like to grow out a beard for the first time. So yeah, I had it pretty long. I had it like down to here. Um, uh, my girlfriend definitely doesn't like it at that length, but uh, somehow I was able to convince her. Um, and yeah, so, uh, and then I just like recently cut it and this, this is about three months worth of growth right now. I had a bit of a crazy neck beard going on. So last week I went in for a little bit of a trim just so it's looks a little bit more proper. Looks very well shaped, it looks looking good. Thank you. Looks like your mustache is coming in. Looks like you can, you're about ready to get a separate mustache if you wanted it. Uh, yeah, and I've been using this uh, ProRassle mustache wax that Kaz told me about, and it's it's been great. It's a really nice, like, yeah, soft um, mustache wax, and I have it in right now. I just kind of curled a little bit up into the cheeks, and I, I, I kind of dig the way that looks right now. So Yeah, like yeah it looks that. good. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, you reminded me um, that you and Kaz are from Canada, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, and the rest of us is from the U.S. I'm from North Carolina. Tyson, you're from South Dakota, right? Correct. Yep. And My wife is from Canada, so. Yeah. Patrick, where are you from? I'm from Ohio. Ohio. Oh. Yeah. O-H-I-O. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, toss in a quick shout out here for James Big Gun Smith in the comments here. Um, I've been chatting with him a little bit on Instagram. He's got... So, like, if we, you put all of our beards together, you would probably get his beard. It's just very <laughs> long and thick and out this way. And uh, so, yeah, he's uh, we've been talking, and he's thinking about maybe starting a YouTube channel himself. Um, he never really thought about it before, but after talking to me about it and how much fun I'm having, he's thinking about starting one, too. So I think it'd be great to have a nice, big, beardy man doing some uh some youtube stuff and and some live streams maybe so i just wanted to give him a quick shout out there yeah absolutely brother go go for it man yeah I, i'll have to take a look at his beard after this uh after this stream same here maybe we could talk yeah. a little bit about our uh, youtube journey uh, you know it's it's very fun with the videos but just like with anything else you can kind of get sucked into the analytics game and the popularity mm -hmm. contest and that kind of thing. There's a lot of frustration and time and, and that kind of mm -hmm. thing that goes into it. I'm kind of curious on you guys take on some of that for your channel. Do you guys mind if I start? Go for it. Go ahead. Go for it, bro. So I've been like Tyson with this. Um, that's actually, I think the reason why he ended up subscribing to my channel, but I've been watching like hours and hours and hours of video uh, on like how to YouTube, how to maximize your thumbnails, tags, like all this stuff to get more views. And yeah, it does get kind of frustrating. I mean, I have, I've got one video that has 1,700 views. I've got one that has 300 and everything's like 100 or less. But I'm doing all the same things with all of them. You know, they're all related tags. They're all the same style thumbnail once I found one that works. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it does get frustrating because you never know what's going to be popular, even if these like tag apps or whatever tell you that, uh, you know, it's uh, something that's searched frequently. Uh, you still might not get shown on YouTube. So it's like there's this whole algorithm game that needs to be figured out. I try not to worry about it too much. Um, I don't want it to be my sole focus. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as I'm adding value and I get a couple of comments, uh, really what a, my fun part is like interacting with people through the comments and Instagram and things like that. So, you know, if, if I get five views and, 
and five comments, to me that's better than a million views and no comments. So. Yeah, I was kind of the same way that I, I posted. I don't know. I posted over well over 100 videos at this point. The first few just really never caught on. I'd get a few views and that kind of thing, and it just got frustrating. Uh, I finally kind of put my mind to it and came up with the Beard Advice series, and that kind of took off because it's uh, unique, and, and I'm having a good time with it, and it's not getting tons and tons of views, but it's a lot of good feedback, a lot of comments, and that kind, that's kind of what made me happy. Uh, and I'm kind of happy with that. I try not to get too caught up into it because you can spend hours a day with those thumbnails and the, all that stuff. And I try to do it uh, as well. I, I try to stay to, you know, stay true to what I want to do with it, which is get information out to people um, the best way I can and try to use my, my teacher, my teacher brain with some of that stuff. But as long as you keep, ha keep having fun with it, man. We got a young one on the stream. Uh, yeah. 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 Future beer. <laughs> Future YouTuber. Adam, we'll get Adam, we, got the baby now, we got the baby on there. <laughs> so you got the same hairstyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Brian, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, well, I, at first it was – well, like, I, I'm very much into the analytics still, still uh, – trying to optimize strategies for optimal growth. That's always going to be part of my strategy. But um, I found the times where I'm getting the most views, getting the most subscribers. It's it's not as fulfilling as when I feel like I'm genuinely delivering value. Um, and at the same time, you know, I'm getting engagement in my comments because when you get engagement in your comment section, you know truly that you're delivering value because they take you know time out of their day to write something uh you know <laughs> well, well, well whether it's hateful or good <laughs> but, 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 but both both are, are are good to me because it it makes me know that what i'm doing has impact and um and hell i i, I try my absolute best to uh I, I interact with people one one on one on instagram or whatever as well and uh, I, I think it's a really important thing to do um like obviously the finan the financial gains and things of that uh, things of that nature come come along with the journey, but um, it's a, it, it's I, I think delivering value com should always come first, and the rest comes along with it. I think that I mean agreed. That's the the thing that at the end of the day, that's what we all want to do, right? We all want mm -hmm. to bring something to the community, whether it's knowledge it's advice or it's just this is a good product or you know whatever whatever it is that we do um i, I mean i go back and forth there's so many different things uh with it i think um you know in and this comes this kind of jumps up in the topic of youtube a lot or in the beard community is subscribers or views or you know anything like that and it just depends on what you're going for right like if you're reviewing a company what does success feel like to you? Does success feel like I got a thousand views on my video or does success feel like I got the company 30 sales? What is successful in your eyes? For me, I get a lot of views on my videos and my subscriber count goes up quick, but does that translate over to a hundred sales for the companies when I do a review? Not necessarily. And I, for me personally, I would much rather have 500 subscribers and be bringing a bunch of sales into companies than I would to have 10,000 subscribers. And, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is once you're monetized, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, what matter. I, I could have, I could have 10,000 subscribers. And if only one person's watching my videos, it doesn't matter. What matters is engagement in your videos so like you mentioned it's fun to get those comments whether they're good or bad because it shows that you did something enough to compel somebody to type a comment and that's that's the part that matters you know uh views they don't add up in in monetary um they really don't um i mean maybe it's a couple cents per view i mean it, it's it's really not that big of a deal and uh, it's it's the engagement that matters, at least in my mind. Again, this is all my opinion talking. So I, I just feel like it's engagement, the thumbs ups, the thumbs downs, 
the shares, the, um, my whole purpose, you know, I, I want to grow the community. I want more people to come in. So if I see the same people commenting on my videos as everybody else's videos, like, does it really, you know, it, it, what am I bringing at that point? I want to bring new people into the community mm -hmm. And I want to collaborate and work together. I don't. I don't look at it as a competition. You know, Brian and I are on the same team. We're trying to bring people into the community. We're all on the same team. So if if somebody comes into the community because of me, they're gonna discover Brian. They're gonna discover every one of us, right? Because they're gonna if they got sucked into the community, the beard community, because of beard videos. That's how we all started. We all found probably scuba because he was the first real big one. And then we found all the other people from there. Right. So the, the idea of competition, it just bothers me because no matter how they get into the community, they're going to find all the reviewers because we, we all link together. There's not a ton of beard content. So that, I mean, that's kind of my opinion on it is I'd rather just everybody working together as, like we're, we're too small of a community in my mind to be battling each other at this point. Mm -hmm. We need to band together and work together to grow the whole community before we really try to, before, you know, anything like that comes in into play in, in my mind. But uh, again, you know, just interactivity, thumbs down, thumbs down me if you want. It doesn't matter. At least uh, I did something to get some interaction and, and uh, you know, uh, if you if you came into my video and you thumbs down me, you at least got me a view. If we're talking analytics, you got me a view. You got me some watch time, mm -hmm. and you know it doesn't hurt me to thumbs down me. So, I, I mean, I, I try not to get caught up in the analytics side of it. But like Mick, I, I've spent hours upon hours upon hours researching, um, and and you know like, and that's where the team community side of it comes in, right? I've spent hundreds of hours, I can promise you, hundreds of hours researching. And that's what, if I can prevent somebody else from doing all the research and going through all the crappy articles that I've gone through to get to the good one, to realize that quality thumbnails matter. And I've run multiple tests. Like I, there's a program where you can test one thumbnail versus another thumbnail on YouTube, right? And it'll tell you which one hits more. And I've changed the simplest things as a font and got 80% more clicks on the same picture, same colors, but different font. Like that's, there's so much behind what makes a video take off and what doesn't. And it's, so it's like, you know, if, if, you, if I can prevent somebody from, you know, if I can see somebody like have a crappy thumbnail or just something that I'm just like, you know, if you change, if I know, like you change this, you're going to get, be more beneficial. Like that's what it's all about. Let's, and, and I think Brian would, I keep referencing Brian because I I haven't talked to the others as much as I've talked to Brian, so that's why I keep referencing Brian. But you know, I think his teacher mentality would be the same type of way. It was like if you can prevent somebody from going through the hardships that you went through or this time, and you can just help them. Like, why wouldn't you? You know? Yeah, absolutely. I can talk, by the way. So <laughs> you guys just kind of have to take over because I can keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, um, the the comparison tool or whatever they are is that um is that one of the like Chrome extensions or whatever they're using or is there actually one that's built into YouTube that I haven't found yet? No, nope, it's a Chrome extension. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, here's here's the first piece of advice for anybody creating YouTube. You need Google Chrome because Chrome extensions help you in your YouTube analytics and videos and tags and. I don't necessarily believe in keywords and tags. Like I will put some in there, but I don't do a ton of keyword and tag research because like, as Mick mentioned, like he said, I'm putting all the hot, the popular tags in. Okay. So popular tags are great, but if it's a tag that's searched for a hundred thousand times each month, like cool, you're, you're, you're making a video on things that people are searching, but so are a hundred thousand other people. So where in that list, is your video showing up? You're probably showing up on the third or fourth page compared to like a popular, uh, like a really big channel that's showing up on the front page, right? Yeah. So it, it's like keywords and tags. I'm kind of just like, well, I, I'm still running tests on is it cool to use a very popular one or is it cool to use a very unsearched one? You know, it's, it's just where do you want to be? Yep. 
uh, and it, it, like things like two, like uh, the Chrome extension TubeBuddy is really good because it it uh, allows you to measure the competition, right? It's not only yep. just the search velocity, but it's also the competition and the uh, search optimization. So that that helps. Um, and I, I like like me personally, I'm I'm a big keywords guy. Uh, so sometimes a little too much. Um, because it, 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 like they can be limiting. They can be very, very limiting because sometimes I'm making videos um, and I, I want them to go a certain direction, but I can't because it's not keyword rich or whatever. And it's like, okay, uh, but, but sometimes I, I take it on the chin and I go, all right, I'm going to make this video knowing that it's not going to get enough surf, search traffic over time. But that's okay because it's going to be valuable to uh, to my subscribers that watch it, right? It's it's not going to be it's not always going to be good for driving new people in, but it, um, you know, it sometimes you just need a good portfolio of videos of the topics that you truly think that are going to be valuable, right? If you're just covering the same things that everybody have, that everyone else is covering, then and you're not covering the things that you actually want to talk about, then uh, you know, like the, 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 there's a lot of views in my portfolio that don't uh, that don't get views anymore. They're just sitting there, zero views a day. But then there's other ones where I did research for, and they're getting uh, up to a thousand views per day, just racking them up. But you know, they're both as valuable to me, in my opinion. Well, yeah, the the great thing about those videos that are you know very where you're very specific is it's it's like that needle in a haystack video. Like you know, someone's looking about. They're, they're searching something so specific, they can't find a video on it, but then they come to your channel and you have that one video with 10 views that you know answers that question and you just made someone's day. I think you actually talked about that in one of your videos where someone thanks you, they're yeah. like, oh my God, I spent hours searching for this and I finally found you on page 20 and thank you for answering my question, right? So it's uh, that's that's where I get value you know, in, in those kinds of videos. Like sure, it's my, I have, videos that only have 30, 40, 50 views, but the comments that I'm getting on them are so genuine and thankful that I'd rather have that than have, you know, the channel explode, so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and for, for a little while I was doing, um, you know, what I called Hazar Talks, which was, was, you know, me just talking on camera and, you know, fleshing out my thoughts and speaking about things I truly believed in. Um, and man, the, the engagement was amazing and the, uh, you know, people were just saying, "Hey, I've never seen this. These ideas be put forward in the beard community. This is amazing. Thank you." <laughs> but of course, you know, after the first day, they stopped getting views, right? But they're they're awesome. I, I'm thinking about how to incorporate them in my channel once again. I'm still trying to think of that that route, but uh, it was um, a great thing to have on my channel, regardless of the fact that it didn't do too well in terms of views. So Patrick, are you into the analytics side of that? I know you've had a lot of growth over the past couple of months. To me, I just do it. Like, I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. I just, I'm just more or less, I do it because it's fun. It, um, it's my, uh, how do you say it? It's like my high. You know, besides besides sitting there going out, you know, smoking a joint or something or doing whatever, that's that's my high. I enjoy getting these products, uh, <clears throat> using them, and just for there for a while, it was hard for me to make a video because my anxiety just like I was sitting there, um, 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 and it was just like, man, I gotta I gotta fix that, and like to me. If I could, if I can make a couple sales for for uh, a company, I'm doing my job, and that makes me feel good. And if the company, uh, you know, message me and message me and tells me, hey, you know, we loved the video, we loved your review, then I know I did that review right. And so far, like I've got third, second, and third uh, reviews, and uh, and I recently started to branch off into doing other products. So that's that's kind of another thing. I uh, actually had a guy uh, <clears throat> question me, uh, you know, he says, all you do on your uh, YouTube is uh, beard products. Are you sure you're going to, your fan base is going to, you know, enjoy this? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. If not, I'll make them, you know, I'll make them, <laughs> make them, make them, uh, 
what's the word? Uh, I'll, I'll get there. Uh, I can't think of the word. I'm, I'm starting to get anxiety attack. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, I just, I, I more or less do it because I enjoy it. Uh, I get great comments. I get good feedback. Uh, and it's just, it's just a good time for me. And yeah. it, I mean, that's, that's it, what it's all about for me. It gives you a high. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, you hear that guy say you, you make a beard YouTube channel. It's like smoking a joint. <laughs> in, in Patrick's words. <laughs> Here goes the explosion of YouTube channels being made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weed's pretty good. You ever tried YouTube though? <laughs> oh my god ain't nothing like it <laughs> i think it helps the guys with the anxiety right because you get to do you know you get to in your own house you get to do a performance kind of thing and that performance yeah. is does give you a natural high so yeah uh, part of that uh, patrick Both. by the way i loved your kushal bar video where you were showing how to use it you actually shows the first person i saw that actually used it on their mustache and it was yeah. like, oh man, that thing is compact enough to help my mustache. So I, I reached out. I got one of them now, and I tried it, and man, that works so well for that kushal bar. I love it. Yeah, that thing's a, that thing's made of gold. That's a great, great tool. Barton says, "Chase that dragon, Patrick." And <laughs> Roger B says, "Beards, beards, and bongs." There you go. <laughs> Oh my gosh! This is uh, <laughs> going to be Roger's new channel: beards and bones. <laughs> I just wanted to say to you that actually some of the stuff that I've actually purchased recently from a review has been either something that that Patrick or actually No BS Beard Reviews uh, reviewed something outside of beard products. So it just goes to show that you know, like I'm definitely into like the beardy stuff, but like. Uh, Matt over at OBS um, did this review on these like Anson belts or whatever. They're like super customizable. Um, and I went out and bought one and then I tried out this, uh, I got an order in for a subscription box that Patrick reviewed. So like it's, there's definitely value in doing those, those videos and there's, you know, it doesn't hurt branching out and doing other things and see how they do, you know, maybe your, your viewers are into both. Um, so like, you know, it doesn't hurt to try new things. So. Kudos to Patrick for trying something different. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. No worries. Yeah, if, 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 I think it's one of the biggest struggles as a YouTuber because, well, obviously we're all very passionate about beards. Um, but, you know, and then at the back of your mind, you're like, oh, I'm passionate about all these other things. And you have to assess... <laughs> All right, like, if, if, is this actually going to fit with my audience? Is this something that they're going to want to watch? Because uh, in some cases, it's not, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it might be better to uh, make another YouTube channel. But, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I feel like if you do it properly, if, you, if your value statement for your YouTube channel, right, like my, 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 my value proposition, rather, it, of my YouTube channel is, Hey, we'll show you how to fill out your patchy beard. Then we'll show you how to style your beard. And then uh, at the end of that, we'll show you how to pick bold intentional outfits to complement your beard. That's my, right. And that, and that's, it, I feel like that's a, that's a good segue into, you know, uh, getting people into all of my content. Right. Um, yeah. you're, and, exa uh, you're exactly right about the, um, knowing your audience, because I've got another channel that's music related. And I've had that since like 2011. So I've had it for years and years. I think I'm like yeah. 9,000 subscribers or something like that. Over 1,500 videos of oh, nice. music and not not all just me, but different classical, or not, not classic, but classic bluegrass and oh, yeah. sets and those kind of things I put for people. Uh, and I started doing beard videos and I started getting a lot of pushback. It's like, what are you doing here on this channel? So I did that for a couple of months yeah. and then split in, into, into the new channel. So uh, that's kind of why you're getting a lot about the analytics part. Once you hit that thousand subscribers and you start making money, you do start thinking about that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're not there yet, you're just kind of naive about all of the money that could be made potentially, then it, you can kind of stay in a little happier place, I think. Sometimes I wish I didn't know about all the analytics stuff. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's an unfortunate reality, but YouTube doesn't like a mishmash of content. Mm -hmm. um, it, the YouTube algorithm works in a very specific way that um, 
it's, it assesses what's on your channel and they have to understand where to push your videos, right? And if, but if you, if they see a whole mishmash of content and they can't put their finger on what your audience is, then your videos won't be pushed anywhere. Obviously with some, certain channels, it's not a huge thing, especially if you have like a search-based channel, which a lot of beer channels are search-based channels, you know, like um, my videos, you know, like how to style your four inch beard and things of that nature. Um, they sit there and they just get traffic over time. Uh, something like 80% of my traffic is from search. It's not from su suggested videos. It's not for things of that nature. So uh, beer channels are great in that way that we can get away with a lot, everything being pretty much search based and they're, they're evergreen, they're evergreen videos, which is, uh, it, it's amazing in that way. But yeah, it, it really is just about, you know, how much do you want to please YouTube and how much do you want to please your heart? <laughs> I, think well, I think, I think part of it just comes to don't be st don't be stuck in your ways, right? There's a YouTube studio, like a creator studio, and there's creator studio beta. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people don't want to switch to beta because they're used to the regular creator studio, but there's different things in beta. For instance, if you click on a video and you see underneath it that there's hashtags, that's not a thing anymore. In YouTube mm -hmm. beta, you actually put the location in there and then that replaces the hashtags. So if you click on my recent videos, they will say a location instead of hashtags. So in my mind, if YouTube beta is what's coming for the studio and they're replacing hashtags with locations, that's what the algorithm is looking for. And that's what's going to help you in the algorithm. It, like, you got to be able to play YouTube's game a little bit too. If that's what YouTube is doing under advanced settings, then that's most likely what they're looking for to help push your videos, right? And but so if we're stuck in ways of how we did things two years ago, like what a lot of people don't realize is the algorithm changes whenever Google wants it to change. Yep. And it changes about once a year is how they change it. And they don't really just come out and be like, oh hey everybody, attention. We changed our algorithm. You kind of have to be paying attention to how the algorithm works. Um, for me, I'm just a dork, so I like to <laughs> research all that stuff and just kind of like it interests me of how that can work, and I like to do different experiments and stuff. But on the beard side of it, realistically, it's like I just like doing it. It's fun for me, and if I ever, if I like, if I don't ever get paid, you know, I've had somebody ask me before because I've said like I don't want money for a review, and I've had somebody say like, "Well, you're putting so much time and effort into it, like." it's almost like a second job, you should be paid. And I'm like, yeah, but what if I was a hunter or a fisher, or if this is my only hobby and this is what I spend my time doing, you know, anybody that goes hunting, fishing, all you're doing is spending money, right? So if I have to put a little bit of money into this and this is my one hobby and I don't, I'm not going out drinking or things like that, like it is just a hobby then and it's fun. And like Petra said, it's your high, it's your thing. If this is what you like doing, then it's a completely different motivation and completely different mindset than somebody that's got a 10,000 different hobbies and they really are trying to get into this to make money. And I think that's where you see like differences in videos and things like that. You can tell when people really just enjoy trying products and enjoy making videos and like what they're doing compared to something that is like, I'm, I'm I want to make money off of this and I want to do it this way. And you know, it's, it's, I think I feel like you can see a little bit of a difference and and you know like I told Mick I was like I can watch his videos and I can tell that he did research because he's taking what I've seen in research and applying it to his videos and Brian's the same way and you know I, I haven't got to watch uh, I mean I've watched uh, videos but uh, you know like Brian's the same way like I've given Brian advice or seen him change his videos and his stuff over time. Like you can see him putting this into it and you know, it, it's all just what you put in. I, I, I truly believe what you put in is what you get out and, every, and in everything that you do. If you put a lot of time and effort in, you're going to get that rewards out of it. Yeah, and that's just, put out it's, it's practicing. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, there's a question in the comments here, Brian. I don't know if you see the comments. I think this one would be good for you to answer. It's about uh, mustache wax products in the hot weather. I know you've been trying out a lot of uh, mustache wax lately, so do you want to maybe 
give some advice there. Where is that one at? I didn't see it. It's, uh, I'll just read it out here. It's from Dian Olsen Dahl. He says, what mustache wax products are you guys using in hot weather? I can't seem to find a wax that is not getting soft. And the mustache is falling down and losing its style. I use Mr. Bra uh, Mr. Bear now. Uh, I guess it depends on if you're if you're trying to go all the way up for the handlebar look, then you need a really really stiff one. Um, uh, I'm a fan of the one from the Bearded Bastard. is uh, a good, um, fairly strong one. Uh, Can you handlebar has two different styles. They've got the primary, which is a little bit looser. So if you want more of the natural look. And then they've got the secondary, but the secondary is really tough because you've got to get, um, you basically have to use the hair dryer to get it to melt down to get it in. But once you get it in, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I found myself really using the Royal Beardsman a lot because it is unscented and it's um, a white beeswax. So it actually spreads pretty evenly. So those are kind of my go-to ones right now. Um, you, you can find if you've got a longer one to use the hair dryer and then put, try to put it on the cold shot to kind of lock it in. Uh, it really does help style it. What do you think about uh, Death Grip Mustache Wax? I've been um, recommended that one many times before. I don't know if you've tried I, that I one. I haven't tried that one. So I've tried several, uh, and, and I do several videos on mustaches uh, and products and routines and trimming and all that kind of thing. I actually did an eight-week challenge where I didn't trim anything for eight weeks, and this is kind of the result after it. So uh, not every guy grows the big uh, mustache like that. So make sure you check out the channel. And uh, you said it was called Death Grip. I'll, uh, I'll try to add it to my list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Are they Canadian? I, what? Oh, I, I have no idea. I, I've, uh, oh. I looked up a couple of review videos. Uh, you know, you type in the keyword, strongest mustache wax, strongest mustache wax, which is what a lot of people are looking for. And that's what a lot of people are saying. So Yeah, if you're and, going for like a, like a, a special occasion kind of thing, a lot of the, the competition guys actually use like hair gel that's used to spike your hair. Oh yeah. That to start with, and you can use uh, Elmer's glue, the kind that's in the purple <laughs> container. Yeah. That is the non-toxic, natural kind of stuff. Uh, you yeah. can also use hairspray on it. Um, I just found that the Kusha bar there is helping me kind of style everything out. Kind of warms it all up, and then yep. you can lock yep. it in. Yeah, I find I find the heat brush helps a lot. Well, I, I have the in fashion heat brush that I use. Uh, well, well, actually, well, my uh, my nickname on the channel is Doctor Stash, but. <laughs> um, uh, recently, people have been calling me Doctor Heatbrush because uh, <laughs> because of how much I uh, I promote it. But yeah, it's it's really good to get the mustache you know, out of the mouth and to especially for you know the uh, the corners of the mustache. I find um, oh sorry the ends of the mustache because the the ends is in my mustache typically get really frayed at the end. Mm -hmm. But the, I find the mustache you know the heatbrush really really irons the whole thing out and allows for a straighter more uniform appearance. Yeah, it's oh, got a more polished look that way. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Anybody else have any questions? Put them in the chat. We'll talk about them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, let's take a look at yeah, a few here. Take a look at that. Maybe we'll talk about some of the uh, videos we've got coming up. Patrick, what you got coming up for reviews next week or two? Oh, man. Yeah, oh, I heard you say you got some Barden coming to you. I'm, I'm excited to see what you think about those products. Yeah, we talked uh, this past week, and he uh, he's got some stuff headed my way. I'm I'm excited about that. I hear keep hearing great things about it. It's awesome. I mean, uh, myself, I'm also doing a Barton review. I did an unboxing a couple of weeks ago, so this is the follow up on the uh, frankincense and sandalwood uh, oil bomb and uh, sorry oil. I always say bomb the oil, the butter, and then the uh, conditioner. So that's going to be my video coming out next Saturday. The wash, right? Not the conditioner. The wash, correct. Yeah, even though it's I got it right in the video. It's this anxiety. <laughs> Blame it on the anxiety. No, but it's really, you know, their wash is kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's almost like a conditioner, <laughs> too. Yeah. yeah. Tyson, that's who have you got this week? Uh, this week is going to be Wild Dog, um, Wild Dog Company, uh, Beard Company, um, and then I have some stuff lined up. Um, it, it's a little bit difficult when you do weeks at a time, uh, but uh, 
I'm just I'm I'm coming up with different ideas I want to do, and I got some uh, videos coming out that I've been researching. Um, I don't want to give too much away because uh, it kind of ruins the video, but um, I've mentioned a couple things lately about what jojoba oil uh, feels like to me in my beard. So I got a video coming out on jojoba oil, um, and then just my standard week long stuff. But I really want to try to get into a series. I want to try to get the business owners involved a little bit more. Um, I'd love to get interviews uh, going with the business owners. Like I talk to them all on the phone right now um, and interview them when I'm in the week with them. But I'd really like to get in, get them on vi the Friday night uh, live streams with me. I've done it a couple times. Like I had Ruddy Man uh, on a live stream side by side with me. And we just did it for the whole live stream. And it was awesome and great feedback. So I'd like to try to get biz you know owners to do all that stuff uh, every week. But um, some people are shy chat. like us. Maybe you could do what? a Google chat for your um interview that you do instead of a phone call and then you could record that and then you could actually edit it because maybe yeah. you know, some companies don't like going live it's too much for them but if you could say okay this is a controlled environment i can edit out stuff and then put it mm -hmm. in your review at the end of the week um, yeah that might work better yeah absolutely so just always thinking and evolving and and i and i just think that's important but uh, Wild Dog this week, and then, you know, I'll, I'll have Virginia Beard Company coming up. Um, uh, I don't know. I got I got a few, I guess. A lot of stuff I, I've just ordered over the last few months, and I just have boxes sitting in my studio, and it's just if I don't have somebody reach out to me one week, want to do something, then I'll just pull out something that I've purchased, and just I'll Instagram and be like, you're up. <laughs> you know, it's like a <laughs> week. Yeah, let's well, you, get let's more, do this. I think there's more than 50, 52 beer companies. So I don't see how you're going to work all that for the weekly. <laughs> I guess you'll figure it out. And my, well, my, might, I, might I say, I think Tyson has one of the most aesthetic beard, uh, like beard shelf, uh, you know, uh, yeah. like setups I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beard shelf envy on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I look at some of these videos, and it's just like it's just everywhere, and so organized. So, uh, oh my god! <laughs> I like when he had when he had them lit up, right? Because oh yeah, it's like, it's like going into the grocery store, and you go to the, the the register, you know, and they've got the candy lit up now. They have lights on the candy. It's kind of yeah, like right. on the beard shelf. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like the channel, lights around it. For my channel, I've got uh, the Kusha bar that I just got in. I got a um, uh, straight razor set for Naked Armor. Uh, so we're doing some of that stuff as well as some product reviews for um, Renewed Man's on this all bomb. And then uh, the Brothers Groom, I got to finish that one up uh, and whatever else comes in. Uh, so a lot of stuff there. Uh, that's, so that's for me. Kaz, what do you have? Wrap this thing up for us here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I I got. Um, uh, I just I, released a video. What's that? <laughs> like right now. Uh, I, was, I was just oh, yeah. to say, you caught me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's the the man cave actually sent me uh, this uh, black spice beard oil, and I haven't opened it yet, so I might do a little unboxing. Um, and I was reading through the ingredients, and there's, a, there's one really interesting ingredient in here, and uh, you guys will have to uh, stay tuned to. <laughs> <laughs> see, see what, what ingredients in there. Uh, I, I think it'll be an interesting review. So that's what I have in terms of reviews. And then, uh, of course, liquid I have... Courage. Yeah, like, like liquid courage. You know it. Um, yeah, well, it, actually, it has uh, some relevance to what, what, uh, what we talked about earlier. Uh, so so th 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 that's my little teaser. Uh, again, I don't want to give too much away like Tyson. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, then I have... Um, I, I always have yeared updates coming in because you know I'm I'm doing my yeared. I just hit month eight, so you know it's coming in pretty strong for uh, for month eight. I'm getting a little bunch of translucency, but you know I'm pushing through. I, I have a uh, new beard styling routine that I'm going to be uh, releasing, uh, and it's been um, ch 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 changing a lot <laughs> in terms of how my beard looks. I've been getting away from the heat brush because it makes my uh, beard too straight. But it was great when my beard was shorter, for sure. Agreed. I've been getting away from the heat brush, too, because it just fries my hair, it seems like, real quick. Because I got yep. the really fine hair. Oh, yeah. And so, like, it just makes it too straight and yep. too much. Yes. I like yep. to have a little curl in my beard. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, like my curl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, but Patrick has a great curl in his beard. Look at look at that. A, a, a lot of nice natural waves. Uh, but, but, yeah. but, but, my personal beard texture and color, uh, I find the, the curls and the waves don't typically look that good. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, but um, I like to, right now I'm trying to find a nice in between ground between uniform and, you know, natural looking. And uh, I think I've kind of hit that as of recently. So you guys will have to, uh, everyone watching, and you guys should have to check out my new uh, beard styling routine when it comes out. Because, uh, um, I don't think I've, I, I've never seen anyone use this particular strategy. So and hopefully it will be useful to you guys. So you guys have uh, any closing statements? <laughs> <laughs> My closing statement would be uh, just to su subscribe to everybody that's here. And I Absolutely. hope you guys got something out of it. We didn't necessarily talk about any particular companies, which is fine. I don't know if that was a goal or not, but, I think you all figured out a little bit about each one of us and our motivation behind what we do. And hopefully you figured out a little bit more about what drives us and, and just a little bit more about us. I think the more that we can connect on a personal level uh, with the people that are watching our videos, the more beneficial it is for everybody. You get to know who we are as people and, and what we're all about. So subscribe to everybody here and get to know them and don't be afraid to chat with anybody here on Instagram or anywhere else, because we're all just friendly people that want to talk and, and have friendships and relationships in the community and, and looking for different ways to grow the community and uh, no subscriber count doesn't matter. Nobody's bigger, bigger than anybody else. We're all just bearded people putting out, sitting in front of a camera, putting out a video, you know, that's all it is. So don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. Yeah. That's actually how I got over my anxiety. I figured I'm sitting here making this video. All I'm doing is really talking to the camera, just me and the camera, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yep. You're just yeah. talking. Well, yep. And especially this niche, it's really, really cool because uh, some of the smallest channels, the, 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 those are the channels that are really uh, helping a lot of these beard companies grow. And these are the channels that are getting, you know, lots and lots of engagement well i mean take uh well dancy bearded when he was you know had 1k subs and things of that you know like around there he just popped it, in too hey dan he just popped in hey hey dan, <laughs> hey, dan. Yeah, there you go but, you know, you. hey who else you want to talk about maybe they'll pop in too yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> i've been summoned from the depths. Yeah. But he was he was getting all kinds of uh, you know uh, conversions from companies at you know at a small channel. So you know it, it, it's really a testament to you know the power of uh, you know this community and how subscriber counts aren't really uh, you know the end all be all. No, it doesn't mean anything really. I mean, it's just it, it's the community as itself, the community and how they band together um, as people and. Yeah, uh, the, the community gets behind the companies and the products and, you know, we're, we're a community that the people in the community want to try everything. You know, we want to try, we want to try every company out there and we want to try all the products out there. And, you know, like, it seems like the people in this community are in it all with the, the full wallet, you know, of like, oh, this company's launching something new. Cool. Let's go, you know, and, and let's, let's try it out. And, and that's something that's awesome about the community too is, it's just they're willing to try new things. So like when these companies are like, I want to try the summer butter that looks liquid, but isn't, you know, like isn't just beard oil and it comes out, you know, and now all of a sudden it's, it's, it's nice and people are getting it and people aren't afraid to try it out and be like, Oh wow, this is different, you know? So like the community aspect of everything is just fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nick, you got uh, any words on that? Yeah, my my final thoughts are I'm just, you know, <laughs> being the smallest channel here, you know, it's it's just I'm so thankful. I honestly didn't expect literally every single one of you guys to say yes to doing a live stream with me. Um, I just, you know, I've been in quite a few live streams. They seem like a lot of fun. And I just really wanted to get a core group of guys together and, and you know, do this more regularly. So I just want to say I had a ton of fun, uh, really you know, respect all of you guys and, and so happy that you, uh, you know, said yes to live streaming with me. It really means a lot to me. So thank you all. Absolutely. And we'll have to put your, uh, your, your, uh, plug in your, um, 
uh, in the thumbnail next time to uh, j join in the whole array of superhero-like uh, prowess that is the thumbnail of this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what? When I put Brian in the center of it, it really just like popped. So I so yeah. I kept it there. It, well, it's it, that it's that, it's that uh, Captain America, you know, white stri uh, streak there. That's uh, yeah, 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 really doing yeah. it. Maybe it's because I'm the oldest. I think I'm the oldest. I'm, I'm 43. <laughs> Is anybody older than 43? Yeah, yeah. I, I fleshed everyone uh, out by wisdom. So the the most the wisest was in the front and uh, sorry tyson and patrick <laughs> yeah we got put on the end so yeah <laughs> there you go all right patrick any uh closing thoughts uh no i mean i think our next uh live stream will be i'll be a little bit more looser and be able to uh get a little bit more in it just i, I have i do have a lot of anxiety that i still try to work on but yeah yeah, I mean, I'll being here, being in here with you guys, it's it's help, it's it's helping a lot. Oh, good, good. Yeah, Happy absolutely. That's well, well, great, that's a great right. message to get out for folks too. I mean, it's, it's it's a lot of people have this these anxieties that are introverted like we are. So I think it's good for people to see that. Uh, and for me, I'm just kind of cool here because all of us in this stream are totally different with their channels. I mean, it's a wide variety of things from a bearded vice series, and then uh, what Kaz is doing with the whole um, with the whole wow. outfit image kind of thing, and then Tyson's doing the the devotional stuff and the weekly thing, and uh, they got the uh, mix doing the blogs, um, growing out his beard, and then Patrick's doing the, the hardcore reviews there. Man, it's just great to have such a wide variety of folks from two different countries in here. So it's pretty cool. Glad to be a part of it. Thanks for setting this up, Mick. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Mick. Thank you. Man of the hour. Well, thank you so much, guys. It is so lovely to have you. And, and uh, I really do hope we can do it again, huh? Yes. I, totally. I think Absolutely. it was uh, very useful. And uh, right now in the chat, let, 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 let us know if it was useful. Uh, you have 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's... That's it. Oh, okay. No, nobody's saying anything. That means it was completely useless to them, and we should stop immediately. No, just kidding. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Uh, I hope, hope we can do it again. Oh, loves yes. it. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. We three three people. The delay. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good one, huh? Cheers. <laughs>